The following is a Kingfisher Media Production. Hey guys, you're listening to the In the Blood podcast. I am your host, AC Bergen Fisher. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen, whether you are a new or returning listener. I'd like to invite you to consider what is being shared with an open mind and a receptive heart. Before we begin, though, the following disclaimer. I am a coach, not a therapist. Everything I share is opinion-based and from personal experience. If you require therapy, I'd be happy to help you explore your options. For those who would prefer coaching with me, that could be arranged via email at inthebloodpod at gmail.com. Finally, if you'd like to support this project for as little as $5, you can do so by visiting buymeacoffee.com slash in the blood pod. Hey guys, I want to welcome everybody back to the In the Blood podcast. I'm sorry today's episode is a little bit later in getting released than is normal. The reality is life happens, not just things that happened around me, but things that happened within me sort of slowed things down. And I couldn't figure out how to get something out that both made sense and was honest. And I spent most of today wrestling, trying to come up with something that was going to work for for me and also work for you. And I got to the point this evening where I realized I got to tap out. I got to throw out a lifeline. And once again, call on my brother, my partner in crime, co-founder of this show, Jason Moore, to bail me out. And um, hopefully we can cover something useful while he's helping me. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So part of my desperate attempt to come up with some meaningful content today was I started going through the archives of my old show, Turn Up the AC. And one of the episodes I did for that was just a, a, a short two minute blurb called the darkness. And what the, the, the darkness was talking about was how I had effectively assigned a personality to an emotional state that I was struggling with, like kind of like the ugly side of me and how I sometimes found myself unable to avoid dark feelings or a dark frame of mind. And I found myself almost wanting to embrace this darkness, but there was a shame at the time in embracing that darkness. And I I think it was back in 2020, 2019, somewhere in there that I I recorded that episode. And I realized that all the work I've done trying to avoid both embracing that darkness and also trying to avoid the shame of embracing that darkness is I found myself in a place where maybe I've learned to suppress more than is healthy. And because nobody on this planet knows me better than Jason, it just, it made sense to invite him in to kind of explore this a little bit because his perspective on me more often than not is better than my perspective on me. So, (laughs) and I know he's got his, his own similar kind of challenges going on at at times too. So, I mean, this just seems like the kind of stuff that maybe we all deal with sometimes. Yes. I got my own crap also. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) As I'm guessing at least half of our listeners do as well. (laughs) Right. Okay. I'm going to interject here just for a quick second. Go ahead. And for those of you that are new listeners, acfisher.com. And I, I am definitely pleading to you. Check out Turn Up the AC. They are phenomenal episodes. They really are. They're deep. They're incisive. They're all about who AC really is and his journey from there to here. So, yeah, definitely check it out. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. So just before we started recording, I, I was sort of bouncing off of you the idea of what I wanted to talk about. And you'd made... I think a very accurate and interesting observation about me and my, we'll say, quote unquote, spectrum of emotions. 
No, it's, yeah, quote unquote, yeah, because <laughs> there is no <laughs> spectrum. There is either a pit of sorrow or a pit of logic. There's no middle ground. You never jump out and sit in the middle and hover between the two. There is one or the other. That's, and both of them are representations of a certain type of darkness. Now, I don't think darkness necessarily means negative. It's just that's a pit you're in that you continue to fall when you're there. And then you kind of leapfrog into the other, and then you're there. There's no middle ground for you. There's no happy medium. So I, I truly understand from seeing you how that can be causing you issues. <laughs> no, and it's like it, it's completely fair. And I, I like the way you worded that as being like dark on either end of the spectrum, because it it does feel like that sometimes. I mean the the whole nature of this show is exploring how our relationship with self interplays with our relationship with others. And the reality is that either end of, I, I can't even say the either end of the spectrum for me, either pole there you go. for me definitely complicates my ability to relate in healthy ways to other people. Because when I'm in that really deep pit of sorrow where I'm having the suicidal ideation and I'm overwhelmed and I want to give up and everything just sucks. Who the hell wants to be around that? At least for any large amount of time, right? <laughs> the other end of it, when I get into that really like logical, objective end of things, I, I think most of the people, I mean, not you most of the time, but right. most of the normal people, <laughs> they, 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 they kind of struggle with that because I lean so hard into the logic, I think there's a risk that of maybe losing the empathy or mm -hmm. at least the expression of the empathy. Like I feel it, but I know the logic isn't allowing me to express it in healthy. Yeah. Ways. There's a loss of, of expression of the, of the empathetic feelings. Yes. And I know like you, you get me better than anybody, but even you sometimes really, really struggle when I get that way. Right. But I, but I, I'm in a unique position. I can say to you, Okay, what do you need from me? Mm. And, and or what do you need me to be? Or you know, because we've given that to each other. So between the two of us, you know, yeah, we have one place we can go. But it interrupts everything else. When with therapy, it interrupts conversation. Some people take things the wrong way just because at times we're too logical. Right. Most people don't see our emotional sides. I've learned, well, okay, so now I'm a lot more in touch and I have a lot more middle ground with my emotions and my logic, but that's from watching Lynn and, and learning and at first faking it and not, you know, the true, the true expression, fake it until you make it, right? Mm. So I'm in a bit better position than you are. Not, well, yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, that's a scary thought, but a lot of mine was violent tendencies, so it wasn't necessarily like an emotional, you know, um, all my emotions are flooding out because all my emotions came out in anger and violence, or I was totally logical. I did not have the, the um, sappy middle ground ex except for when it came to my children. Well, see, like that's what I've noticed with you a lot over the years is you did have those two poles. It was either the cold, hard logic. And again, this is outside of your family circle, but it was the cold, hard logic. Or it was the, the, the violence. You didn't have a lot of middle ground. The only middle ground I ever saw was with those people that were absolutely closest to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you and the kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. And even girlfriends didn't, like even for the first four out of the seven years when I've been together, she didn't get that. Mind you, she didn't get violence, but, you know, she had a hard time dealing with me because she didn't understand how to deal with the logic. Because she's an emotionally driven human being. Yeah, which I, I feel like there's a whole other episode in that contrasting the logic versus the emotion and trying to integrate oh, yeah. the two. And dealing with people of the sort, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything about 
us and our our journey inwardly and outwardly is hard. And I think that's a big part of like what we're trying to do here is just like by showing what's going on with us. I mean, maybe there's some truth that rings with whatever steps you're stumbling on today, you know, Mm -hmm. as listeners. So one of the things I was wondering about, because I mean, when you told me that you had observed that there there is no middle ground, it's like, yeah, I I, I feel that. And that's one of the things I was kind of like wrestling with today is trying to think, you know, all, all this work that I've done over the years to keep from being overly emotional. I, I've learned to suppress to the point where it's just like, I, I think all of this discipline and control has left me undisciplined and out of control, ironically. Because the, the things that need to come out, they're not coming out in appropriate ways at regular intervals. Mm-hmm. Which is why I get pushed so hard to one extreme or the other. Like I, I think something more resembling healthy. And again, I'm guessing because I don't know if I've ever been healthy, mm-hmm. but I'm guessing that would lay more in that spectrum of the middle-ish ground. I, I do need to make a point here. So, with um, taking in what you just said. That does not necessarily mean that like you're antisocial. You know, I don't want people to, to get this idea like you know he's like he's like some kind of hermit that only comes out this and that and <laughs> he doesn't socialize because he's you know you have a minor issue with socialization and not in the sense that you don't socialize, but a lot of people misunderstand what you're saying because of the way you swing. Uh, or or <laughs> that's uh, wrong terminology. Um, depending what poll you're on, you know, people will sit down and have a nice conversation with you during coffee, and you're like way too logical. So people are thinking that now, you know, offense is taken, not given. But I've seen a lot of people while they're in conversation with you start to get huffy and huffy and and, and kind of boisterous, thinking that they got to try to prove a point because you're coming at them with a logical perspective and a lot of people see that as argumentative. Yeah, I think that's like an element of me that kind of gets lost on podcast listeners a lot of the time because when I show up for a conversation like this, I've had a bit of time to think about it. Mm -hmm. I've had a bit of time to think about like, okay, how is this going to be interpreted? But in real time, if like I was going to sit down with any one of these listeners that hold me in high regard and try having like a quote unquote normal conversation with them. I think they would feel like they had sand in their underwear pretty damn quickly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have that effect on people and, and, and I'm trying to change that, not just for them, but for me, I'm just, I'm really, really sick of feeling. I know I'm tempted to say broken or abnormal or different, but I, I don't know if any I of those from is what I see. I would say out of place. That's kind of it. I just I feel like I don't quite fit. You know, like one of those keys that will get the door open, but you get to jiggle the crap out of it first. Which is probably why you and I get along so well, because our foot, our messed up <laughs> <laughs> um, are so different that we're, we're in sync. Yeah. Don't, don't know There's, what to add to that thought. I mean, yeah, that's just why we fit and how we fit. There's also a lot to be said about our perspectives of what I feel a lot of the time is misjudged. I, now this is my personal opinion, I don't feel that the way you present yourself when you're in a logical mind is a position that should be taken um, abruptly. Now, again, this is just my opinion, but it seems to me like too many people are too busy worrying about judging and not listening. As soon as they feel like they're they're being confronted, they don't ask. They don't. They just get retaliatory, which puts you back in that box because they're not asking what they need to ask to learn. They're arguing because they automatically feel defensive, not because you put them there, but because they chose to take what you were saying in a logical manner in that perspective well it's one of the the conversations i had with my ex-wife years ago was on that topic you know like how she responded to my logical approach to things and 
she had straight out said, like, you're, you're so very, very sure of your position and you communicate your position very, very clearly. Mm-hmm. And she says, and, and this is something I hate when people say, but I'm just quoting her. She said, you make me feel like what I think is wrong and what you think is right. And that, you know, you are basically antagonizing. Now, I just, I, I need to just sidetrack here just ever so slightly. <laughs> None of us is making each other feel squat, okay? We're all responsible for our own feelings. I will die on this hill. How you choose to interpret what is being said to you is 100% up to you. Yeah, like, I mean, if if you feel like you're being attacked, this is like a, a good time for what Jason is describing, you know, like ask the questions, gain the perspective, try to find out where the person is coming from, rather than trying to formulate a good defense against somebody else's perspective, just try to understand, okay, like, are they even attacking me, first of all? Ask them. Yeah. Something simple. Like, where is this coming from? I'm starting to feel attacked. Is that what you're attempting to do, or am I missing the point? You and right? I do it all the time to people. Sure. And and it's it's empowering because I mean it, if it turns out somebody is trying to be a douche, make them own it. You've already mm-hmm. weakened their position right there. You're more likely to win. <laughs> if they're not trying to be a douche, and they realize they're coming off as one, you just stopped an argument. Yeah, that's the thing. My experience has been that when like somebody is misinterpreting me, I realize, oh no, okay, like I've come in hot. Either the tone of my voice, body language, facial expression, something about my approach is sending the wrong message. I have to change tactics a little bit because I don't want this to escalate. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I don't want to have a misunderstanding, like none of this stuff. I just want to engage in dialogue. Is there something I need to get off my chest, right? I got to add on to this because it's not always what you're putting off. Sometimes it's what the other person is interpreting. Mm. You may be acting appropriately, and because you're coming at a logical point and they're not used to that, they may feel attacked. It's not because necessarily something you're doing. Sometimes it is, absolutely, but sometimes it isn't also. It's both sides. So you have to ask the questions in order to come to any kind of resolution before it becomes a problem. Okay, so all of that being said, this is where like I, I have to make and admission, I mean, not so much for you, because you already know, but for the listeners who don't know, I do think that sometimes I, I use the logic and the calm voice and the slow speech as a way to avoid expressing the emotions that I'm actually feeling and to give myself a little bit of a hiding spot for somebody. Like if they say, you're being a jerk, I can say, well, no, I'm not being a jerk. See, I've been calm this whole time. Mm-hmm. I might be on fire inside. And like, and that's kind of what I'm feeling like today. It's like, I'm on, I've been trying to control myself for so long. I feel like I'm burning up from the inside and I don't really know what to do with it. I don't know what middle ground looks like for a healthy person because I, I realize that since childhood, there's always been a reason to keep certain things to myself. And it just, I, I've put, I, I can't even say I've put out all these fires. I've pushed all these individual things deep down inside one at a time to the point now where there's basically nothing left on the surface. Right. I'm a very deep person, but on the surface, it's like what what's coming across. It's like these two poles that you said, it's like logic or a deep pit of despair. Like I, I'm trying to, figure out like how do i claw myself into the middle ground uh, without completely knocking myself down in the process well first off you don't have to it's not necessarily a negative it's the way you've developed but the other thing that happens is and a lot of people obviously don't realize it from listening to the podcast but it can happen with you (laughs) mid-conversation really yeah (laughs) <laughs> we we can be having a conversation and, you know, it, 99% of the time we're perfectly fine. You're either on a logical or you're on an emotional basis, one of the two, and I'm, I've become uh, used to both. But there's once in a rare while when we start 
talk and having a conversation. And we'll be like 20 minutes into the conversation. And all of a sudden your pulse shifts and you get totally emotional, whether it's sad about something or, or angry about how somebody treated you or something. And you 100% go into that mode. <laughs> mm. How fun. No middle ground. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, pe- the people out there should should have an opportunity to. I don't want to say learn from your mistakes because it doesn't mean you're making a mistake, because a lot of people may be running into the same things because you and I circles are fairly small. We may think we're in a unique position, but if you're out there and you can identify with what we're talking about, leave us messages. Like we're more than open to talking to people or, or heck, leave us a message and let us know you might be interested in coming on the show and discussing this stuff with us. You know, we're, we're totally open to it. hundred percent. But yeah, let us know, like we're not in this pit. It's not just the two of us stepping on each other trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one of those things I find curious too. It's like if, if somebody is going to come to me with certain issues, challenges, whatever it is, like as a, as a coaching client, as a friend or whatever, mm-hmm. I find other people's stuff really, really easy to navigate. Right. Because like, if you're going to come to me with a problem, just picking on you, I can see the similarities sometimes between your journey and my journey. And it's like, okay, this isn't unfamiliar territory, but because I'm not the one who's emotionally inv- invested in this specific transaction, I can see the broad range of what needs to happen, right? Like I, I can give you valuable and healthy input. Mm-hmm. It's one of those frustrating realities about real life is how well equipped I think most of us are to help each other and how ill-equipped we tend to be to help ourselves. 100%. I mean, so, I mean, this is just one more little splash of reality here. Like, I don't want anybody to think like, wow, this guy is really effed up. I shouldn't go <laughs> to him for help. You know, maybe I'm good to come to for help because I'm a little effed up sometimes. Just like, you know, that circle of trust that Jason and I, and I have established with each other. I couldn't have that if I didn't perceive him to be royally screwed up in the head in some way. <laughs> <laughs> It, but it, it's, it's perspective, right? I've heard from clients when talking to them, you know, and there are some clients that you get more involved with and you talk a little bit about yourself and, you know, they've been coming to you for a bit. So you, or you've been involved in a bit of whatever the scenario happens to be. And they can say, you know what? I, I don't understand why you say that about yourself because, you know, we've had X amount of conversations and I've never seen that. But when you're looking at somebody else's, issue it's a lot easier to see the spectrum than when you're looking at yourself and you're in one of two pits fair yeah it's almost like you just you're you you step out of yourself and step into them for a while mm-hmm. right and and you know when they're talking you can see their broad perspective because you're not emotionally charged you're emotionally invested you know it's kind of weird it's like as we're actually discussing this and describing this, I notice that, like, as we're talking about this very thing, I feel almost like that weight's coming off of my chest and out of my stomach. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, okay, I'm in a weird way stepping out of myself in talking about myself. Right. Yeah, you're <laughs> stepping into me. I'm stepping into you. <laughs> yeah. And you know, that's the beauty of human connections, right? We we sort of prop each other up. Mm-hmm. That's that's why human connection is so valuable. And taking the time to ask the questions and then not assuming what they're coming at you with. Super important in communication. I am so glad you and I stopped doing that years ago. Yeah. You know, Lynn and I, we used to butt heads and have our arguments like couples do. You know, never got violent or anything like that with her. But, you know, there were still some pretty hefty arguments. You know, when sure. we were discovering each other and learning our new relationship and, you know, pushing boundaries and all that kind of stuff. And quite honestly, we haven't had an argument. I can also tell you more than a year. Because one of us literally says, okay, stop when the other one's getting heated. And, and you know, we have an opportunity at that point to recall and check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. And then... Okay, so here's where I'm coming from. Yeah, you're right. I'm getting a little bit hot. Here's where I'm coming from. 
So I'm not going down that pit of emotion. Here's where I'm coming from logically. This is what I'm looking at. This is so on and so forth. And because I'm logically charged most of the time when she stops me, I'm able to look at her, take her perspective and feel a little bit of emotion because she's a very emotionally charged person. And when I tell her to stop, she does the same thing. She stops and thinks, okay, you know what? Like, I'm feeling really upset. So where he's trying to hammer logic in, I'm trying to, to blow my emotion up his butt. So he'll start to understand and feel where I'm coming from. I, I've had the fortune of being able to witness your relationship play out basically from before day one. Mm-hmm. And I have had a chance to get to know her over the years to get to know a different side of you too. seeing the two of you grow into each other has been very interesting because yeah, that volatility that was there in the earlier years that started to fade pretty quickly. I mean, it it took a a long while to snowball. Right. But I mean, she's got the ability to pump her logic brakes when she gets too emotional and you've gotten the ability to pump your emotional brakes when you get too logical. Mm-hmm. It's it's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Well, we worked hard, but you know, I guess that's another thing people can take. It it takes work. You know, when we're in one of these pits, or somebody you know out there, audience, is in one of these pits. Most things you can do to help is ask questions. Address it with with honest care, honest concern, and you know, check yourself. Okay, am I getting pissy about this because of X, Y, or Z. And if you are, ask the question. So what I'm perceiving is this. Is that correct? Or or am I missing the point here? And and allow yourself to have the opportunity to be wrong. (laughs) Fair enough. Okay, so do you think there's anything we missed today? No, I think there's, we've we've opened up a lot of doors for more podcasts. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so just in closing, do you have any final thoughts you'd like to leave everybody with today? Just be as real with the people you love as you can be. Or pe- well, not necessarily only people you love, but people you communicate with, people you're interested in having a relationship with. You know, Just don't hesitate to check yourself and be honest about where you're perceiving that uh, the situation is coming from. Yeah, and whereas uh, Jason just caught himself saying not just the people you love. I mean, I, I'd, I'd like to just offer a slightly different perspective on that. Years ago, I had the good fortune of being interviewed with somebody. Um, and part of that conversation that came up was he told me or, or asked me, you know, if, if you can hate for no reason, why can't you love for no reason? And quite often we find ourselves across the the aisle from somebody who we don't know but we strongly dislike anyways i think we can probably figure out how to love without knowing extend the same courtesies associated with that ask the same questions treat them with the same levels of empathy respect consideration however you want to label it let's just try to make a better world for each other because i I really do believe and, and i think today's conversation indication is that when we put ourselves out there for whoever we're interacting with it does come back to us that investment does pay dividends and what we've done through our selflessness is create a better experience for ourselves so while you ponder that over the next week my friends just take this simple thought from from both jason and i and it's become a bit of a cliche but I want you to feel it because it's sincere and it's coming from both of us. Much love.